stand and join us for our opening hymn, Where Two or Three Are Gathered. Excuse me, your grace is enough. That was the prelude. <laughs> God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Oh, yeah. 
Continual mercy, O Lord, cleanse and defend your church. And because it cannot in safety without your help protect and govern it always by your goodness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated, won't you? Our children are welcome to follow the cross out for Children's Church. There we go. Also, just to keep you on your toes, the gospel that you hear today will be different than the one that is printed. So. Okay. Hello. Um, the first reading from Exodus. Moses came down from Mount Sinai. As he came down from the mountain and the two tablets of the covenant in his hand, Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone because he had been talking with God. When Aaron and all the Israelites saw Moses, the skin of his face was shining and they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called to them and Aaron and all the leaders of the congregation returned to him and Moses spoke with them. Afterward, all the Israelites came near, and he gave them in commandment all that the Lord had spoken with him on Mount Sinai. When Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would take the veil off until he came out. And when he came out and told the Israelites what he had been commanded, the Israelites would see the face of Moses, that the skin of his face was shining, and Moses would put the veil on his face again until he went in to speak with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And please read with me the Psalm 99 in your booklet. The Lord is king, let the people tremble. He is enthroned upon the cherubim, let the earth shake. The Lord is great in Zion, he is high above all peoples. Let them confess his name, which is great and awesome. He is the Holy One. O mighty King, lover of justice, you have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord our God and fall down before his footstool. He is the Holy One. Moses and Aaron among his priests and Samuel among those who call upon his name. They called upon the Lord, and he answered them. He spoke to them out of the pillar of cloud. They kept his testimonies and the decree that he gave them. O Lord our God, you answered them indeed. You were a God who forgave them, yet punished them for their evil deeds. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord our God, and worship him upon his holy hill, for the Lord our God is the Holy One. The second reading from Peter. I think it right, as long as I am in this body, to refresh your memory, since I know that my death will come soon, as indeed our Lord Jesus Christ has made that clear to me. And I will make every effort so that after my departure, you may be able at any time to recall these things. For we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we have been eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received honor and glory from God the Father when that voice was conveyed to him by the majestic glory, saying, This is my Son, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice come from heaven while we were with him on the holy mountain. So we have the prophetic message more fully confirmed you will do well to be attentive to this as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. First of all, you must understand this, 
that no prophecy of scripture is a matter of one's own interpretation, because no prophecy ever came by human will, but men and women moved by the Holy Spirit spoke from God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out, an unfailing treasure in heaven, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. Truly I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat and he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night or near dawn, and finds them so, blessed are those slaves. But know this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. The Gospel of the Lord. You want may your presence here open your spirit among us help us to find you are rising up now like a fountain of grace from the holy ground here in this place here in this place in this on. Did you hear it? Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. It is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Do you hear it now? The invitation? Do you hear the gift we are invited to have? The gift to be in his kingdom unconditionally. This is the opportunity to be in peace, to have a sense of freedom, to be offered hope, and to be loved unconditionally. But yet, what kind of gift is offered with the words, do not be afraid? Do not be afraid. These words are meant to be one of comfort as we continue to hear how we may accept the invitation. In our gospel reading today, Jesus provides us with guidance in what is expected and what is basically expected of us in order to receive this gift. First, we must be willing to trust in God. 
We must be willing to let go of the treasures that tie us down, not just our physical treasures, but our intangible ones, like anxieties, worries, and hurts. These pull us away from one another and from God. For if we trust in him and let these things go, he will unconditionally provide the way and provisions needed to live our lives fully as Christians. Now this comfort sounds pretty good, doesn't it? But wait. There's more to it than just resting in the comfort of letting go of these things. There's more to it than just resting in the comfort. There's more to it than just accepting this wonderful gift and being complacent in our lives. For Jesus continues on to tell us what we should not just simply take the gift and remain in our own calm, happy, and peaceable bubble. We're to respond to God's loving gift. For it's the kind of gift that we're not to take for ourselves and keep within us. It is the kind of gift that we must be prepared to accept and share at an unexpected moment. It is the kind of gift that makes us who we are and serves as how we identify in relationship with God. It is a gift that we are to hold in a special place that is strong enough where no thief comes near, no moth destroys. A place where our heart is joined with it, allowing us the strength, the confidence, and compassion to know when and how it may be shared. In one of the commentaries I read while preparing for this sermon, the writer spoke about the thieves that might exist in our world today, and how by this gift, We are not fallen victims, but a people of hope, as we are able to see beyond the tangible losses and see how God is at work around us, when, where, and in whom we least expect. She writes, yes, there are thieves threatening our lives and our world, but more often than not, they are identity thieves who convince us of scarcity and steal our ability to be generous. Thieves who convince us we are condemned and steal our ability to forgive others, and even ourselves. Thieves who convince us we are failures, undeserving of love, and steal our ability to look beyond ourselves and catch a glimpse of God's presence in our lives. By the very nature of God's love and promises being unconditional, we are set free from worry with regard to our identity in God. The source of our worth and our identity cannot be stolen when it is found not in our possessions or successes, but in God, in God's forgiveness, in God's love. This reality, she continues, is what makes it possible for us to be prepared for God's kingdom at all times and in all places, because this kingdom is not really about a time or place but about our ability to see the work of God around us. In other words, what Jesus is saying is that the kingdom is more about the transformation than the transaction exchanged. Now, as I read this, I couldn't help but recall an experience that happened many years ago. My husband, Ray, and I were living in New York, and commuting by train into Manhattan. And at the end of the workday, we had arrived at the train station in White Plains only to discover that our car had been stolen from the parking garage of the train station. After having reported the incident to the local police and later getting home, the reality sunk in. Vulnerability and fear sunk in as we felt the sense of being violated. It was within a few weeks that we got the call that our car had been found in the Bronx. And two kids between the ages of 12 to 14, along with a third older teen, had stolen the car 
taken it out for a joyride and were caught. There was a police chase involved, and during the chase, the car was steered into a brick wall. The two younger teens of the three were caught. The older teen ran off and got away. None of the kids were seriously harmed, but needless to say, the car was quite damaged. When we arrived at the police station to claim our car and determine if we wanted to press charges, we made the decision to forgive the kids involved and decided not to press charges. Our intent was filled with hope that these kids would be grateful for the second chance and would learn from their mistake and be empowered to resist such temptation of wrong behavior in the future. We had a chance that day to see punishment and justice done to them, but chose to provide a more loving, understanding, and forgiving alternative. We gracefully let go of the vulnerability and violation that had taken place and allowed God's unconditional love to lead the way. Now, there are many ways in which things may be taken from us. For there are those who enter our lives who may take possession of our time, talents, strengths, and identities. Perhaps it's the poor among us, the homeless person on the street, or perhaps it's the family next door struggling, struggling financially. Perhaps it's the stranger who needs someone to advocate for them, or even a close friend who needs a shoulder to cry on. Or perhaps it's a colleague or coworker that needs a little extra training or mentoring. Our response sometimes is more than providing money, food, clothing, or shelter. Sometimes it's about the listening and taking the time to just be present with one another. Sometimes it's just being in relationship with one another, however that may be needed. Regardless of how we are called to respond, we are called to act. God comes into our lives in many unexpected ways, but wants to take away the negative, the burdensome, and sometimes dark or selfish possessions that we may have and transform them into one with a good and just radical change. He transforms with love, forgiveness, compassion, and one that if we choose, lets us be in solidarity with one another. We have been offered an invitation to receive a wonderful gift from God. We have been offered a promise to the kingdom out of God's good pleasure for us. We are called to recognize and respond to this gift. This promise of the kingdom that God is with us and working in and through us. Do not be afraid. Accept the invitation and receive this transforming gift. Share the hope it provides, and empower others to hear the invitation as well. Go. Be dressed for action, and have your lamps lit. Amen. Let us stand and reaffirm our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. 
by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace, let us pray to Jesus our Lord, whoever lives to make intercession for us. We pray to the Lord in your mercy by saying, we pray to you, O Lord. Savior of the world, be present in all places of suffering, violence, and pain, and bring hope even in the darkest night. We pray for peace and an end to all wars, that violence may cease on the streets of the USA. Inspire us to continue your work of reconciliation today. Lord, in your mercy, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord of the church, empowered by your spirit, all Christian people, especially Bishop Kathleen, Gar, Kelly, and Fran, and all the baptized, and the work of your church in every land. Give us grace to proclaim the gospel joyfully in word and deed. Lord, in your mercy, we pray to you, O Lord. Shepherd and guardian of our souls, guide and enable all who lead and serve this community and those on whom we depend for our daily needs. We pray for those who serve in our community and nation, for Grant, Chris, Stephen, Scott, Sarah, Jason, Aaron, Nate, Brian, Devin, Ross, Nathan, Gavin, Matt, Cole, Drew, David, Dustin, Kelsey, Chris, Dan, and Jared. Grant that we may seek the peace and welfare of this place. Lord, in your mercy, we pray to you, O Lord. Great physician, stretch out your hand to bring comfort, wholeness, and peace to all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Fill us with compassion that we may be channels of your healing love. We pray especially for Mary, Sunil, Jackie L., Jamie, Edward, Teresa, Lily, Mary, Jerry, Terry, Kristen, Ian, Michelle, Jim, Paul, Lynn, Sally, Cheryl, Cooper, Elizabeth, Helen, Jackie, Clara, Jeffrey, Jack, and Al. Lord, in your mercy, we pray to you, O Lord. Conqueror of death. Remember for good those whom we love but see no longer, especially Barbara Adam. Help us to live this day in the sure and certain hope of your eternal victory. Let us commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. Lord, in your mercy, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us that peace and unity of that heavenly city where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, 
and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please exchange the peace with one another. Peace to everyone online as well. Well, good morning, everyone. It's really good to see you all here. Uh, a special welcome to anyone who might be new or visiting. Uh, welcome to everyone online as well. If you are new or visiting, and actually everyone should notice the cool little cards now that are in the uh, seat back in front of you, um, those are a new resource that will help us to stay connected. There's one, like I said, if you are new, you can uh, fill that out and drop that in the uh, plate as it goes by so we can uh, know how to serve you best, but there's also other ways to connect on there, so I encourage you to check that out. We are these close to being done with all of the construction. You should check it out down there. Uh, uh, if you haven't walked down to the education wing, ooh, it looks good. The carpet's in, and almost all of the flooring is done uh, in the um, assembly room, and then we'll get everything all put back together, but it looks really, really good. It's very, very exciting. You should have seen on the way in, there's a trifold that is uh, an update on our uh, Afghan families, the two families that we are uh, sort of helping to shepherd that are here, and there's a little update here in the Tower Talk as well. We have a blood drive that's coming up, uh, so there's information about that. Education for Ministry is going to be starting up again soon. Uh, if you're interested in that, do talk to uh, Ray Wheeler. His contact information is in there. Education for Ministry is a really wonderful uh, program that is kind of a deep dive uh, into uh, scripture and theology and church history and things like that, but it's, it's very, very accessible. It's not... Um, so overwhelming or you know, that it's uh, sort of too thick. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a really uh, wonderful program. If you're interested in that, uh, do contact Ray. Next Sunday, we sort of have uh, our back to school uh, event. We will, uh, we always encourage kids to come with their backpacks. We'll have the blessing of the backpacks. We'll bless teachers and administrators to uh, send them off for a, a good school year. So if you've got little ones, have them bring their backpacks. Uh, we will have uh, some special prayers for that. And uh, youth group kicks off next week as well. So that will be pretty much every Sunday from 6 to 8 p.m. Uh, here. And that's for all 6th graders through uh, 12th graders. If you've got questions about that, talk to me. I think, oh, Fran, did you have something that you wanted to? Just a big thank you to everyone who um, helped and supported our back school supplies and backpacks for Comanche Elementary. We delivered 66 of them um, on Friday. So thank you. Yeah. Awesome. More than they even asked for, right? Yeah. That's St. Thomas. So, so awesome. Ascribe to the Lord the honor to his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts. Stand and lift up our hands For oh, the joy of the Lord is our strength We bow down and worship Him now Our great, our awesome is He 
and together we sing. Everyone sing. Holy is the Lord God Almighty. The earth is filled with His glory. Holy is the Lord God Almighty. The earth is filled with His glory. The earth is filled with His glory. We stand and lift up our hands. For oh, the joy of the Lord is our strength. We bow down and worship Him now. How great, how awesome is He. And together we sing. Everyone sing. Holy is the Lord, God Almighty. The earth is filled with His glory. Holy is the Lord, God Almighty. The earth is filled with His glory. The earth is filled with His glory. It is rising up all around. It's the anthem of the Lord's renown. It's rising up all around. It's the anthem of the Lord's renown. And together we Everyone sing, holy is the Lord, God Almighty, the earth is filled with His glory, the Lord, God Almighty, the earth is filled with His glory, the earth is filled with His glory. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. You have filled us and all creation with your blessing and fed us with your constant love. You have redeemed us in Jesus Christ and knit us into one body. Through your spirit, you replenish us and call us to fullness of life. Therefore, joining with angels and archangels and with the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we sing. God, creator of the universe and giver of life, you formed us in your own image and called us to dwell in your infinite love. You gave the world into our care that we might be your faithful stewards and show forth your bountiful grace. But we failed to honor your image in one another and in ourselves. We would not see your goodness in the world around us, and so we violated your creation, abused one another, and rejected your love. Yet you never cease to care for us 
and prepared the way of salvation for all people. Through Abraham and Sarah, you called us into covenant with you. You delivered us from slavery, sustained us in the wilderness, and raised up prophets to renew your promise of salvation. Then in the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word, made mortal flesh in Jesus. Born into the human family and dwelling among us, he revealed your glory. Giving himself freely to death on the cross, he triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his friends, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons that with all your saints, past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Please be seated, and in a moment, the ushers will guide you forward.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace. Grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Go. Christ is in you, and you are in Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Please join us for our closing hymn, Seek Ye First. kingdom of God and its righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you Today. Uh, today. Yes. Excellent. Yes. Do you want to say how many? It's entirely up to you. 38. 38. Very nice. Anniversary? Excellent. 
38 also? No. <laughs> <laughs> Almost, <laughs> close, 35, very good, very good. It clearly, yeah, so young, really. <laughs> Goodness, okay, let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we give you great thanks for these, your servants. Please help them to know what a gift and a joy they are to our community. Lord, we ask that you continue to bless them, guide them, lift them up for many, many more days and years to come. In your name we pray. Amen. Happy birthday. Happy anniversary. Go, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. <laughs>